गुड इवनिंग एंड जय हिंद एवरी वन गुड इवनिंग सर गुड इवनिंग लखन जी प्रतीक सुबोध मोर एंड मोर प्रैक्टिस ऑफ लेक्चर इट इज आर एम बिकॉज इट शॉर्ट्स आउट लॉट ऑफ इशूज कम्युनिकेशन स्किल एंड दैट्स वाई आई कीप एम्फोसाइजिंग ऑन इट लेट्स हैव डिफरेंट टॉपिक्स फ्रॉम यू स्पेशली यू मस्ट बी प्रिपेयर टू टॉक ऑन वराइटी ऑफ टॉपिक्स एंड दैट इज हाउ यू मस्ट बी चूजिंग एवरी टाइम योर टॉपिक ओके बी वाइज टू प्रैक्टिस for lecture it on variety of topics that is how you must approach towards your ssb and you should be comfortable on speaking different types of topic otherwise what will happen wherever you are comfortable you speak better and some new topic comes because you can't dictate which kind of card you will get so it's better we are prepared uh, different topics at least 4 to 5 in each section social scientific and uh, agriculture related things technological things defense international levels relations different countries some current issues you must be prepared to speak and that is how we have to move ahead isn't it so who is the first speaker volunteer okay pratik okay uh, subodh can you keep time yes sir okay uh, those who are new can just follow 3 minutes an individual speaks another one keeps time and we have variety of topics and the listener has an opportunity to prepare simultaneously for various topics isn't it so let's utilize this opportunity okay Uh, subodh keep time pratik go ahead good evening good evening gentlemen today my lecture topic is indo pak relation so before starting my lecture uh, i will uh, give you the sub parts that i am going to speak about first is that is the intro to the topic second the seeds of conflict third steps taken by the indian government and lastly the conclusion so coming on to the first top, uh, first sub part The relation between India and Pakistan have been strained by a number of historical and political issues and are defined by the violent partition of British India, India in 1947, the Kashmir dispute and other military conflicts that we have uh, that we have faced in the history. Even though we share historical, cultural, geographical and economic links, still our relationship with Pakistan has been plagued by hostility and suspicion. Now coming on to the second sub part that is the seeds of conflict there are many reasons for the bad relation that is we have with pakistan one of the major reasons are as follows according to the british plan uh, for the partition of british india all the princely states were allowed to uh, decide whether to join india or pakistan most of the uh, muslim majority princely state joined pakistan as it was a uh, muslim majority country and uh, rest of the uh, hindu majority princely state joined india and some of them uh, joined neither like kashmir which also wanted to uh, rec- uh, which also wanted india and pakistan to recognize its independence which later on resulted with the 1947 war three other forces were also the reason for the hostility between the countries like the 1965 war uh, the 1971 liberation war and the kargil uh, kargil war in 1998 Pakistan is also one of the uh, nations who is suspected of funding terrorism uh, groups like Al Qaeda, Jaish e Mohammed, and Lashkar e Taiba. Due to suspicious activity, uh, Pakistan was also put in the FATF grey list from the year 2018 till 2022. Recently, we noticed that uh, Pakistan was put out of the group. Uh, due to these above reasons, the relation between the countries have grown much worse. Now, coming to the third top, uh, third sub part, that is the steps taken by Indian government. After the 1971 war India and Pakistan made a uh, slow uh, slow progress towards the normalization of uh, relations in 1972 Indian prime minister Indira Gandhi and prime and um, Pakistan prime minister Zulfikar Ali Bhutto signed the Shimla agreement in which uh, it was decided that India would return all the Pakistani personnel and would settle their differences by peaceful means and through bilateral negotiation last 30 seconds diplomatic and trade relations were also reestablished in 1976 various other steps have been taken in uh, by the indian government like the caravan bus service 
providing aid to Pakistan during the 2005 earthquake. Despite these effects, relations between the country have remained frigid, following repeated acts of uh, cross-border terrorism. Lastly, I would like to conclude my topic by saying, sooner Pakistan stops nurturing the terrorism, the better for its own growth and peace in its region. India is always ready for uh, peace talks, but not for cross-border terrorism. Thank you. Okay, uh, good, Pratik. When are you heading for SSB? Date finalized? No, sir. The date seven comes. Okay, you are yet to select that date. Good. Uh, it is always advisable to subdivide your topic, which Pratik has done. Very common topic, Indo-Pak relations, is very important because even if it is not part of uh, lecture eight or uh, it is uh, group discussion or even in interview, everywhere it is important. And basic understanding of this is must being a potential or a future soldier, whatever. This understanding is uh, essential to prove also historical background as Pratik was highlighting and then thereafter how things developed, different wars. More importantly, if you can draw out some strong reasons, what is the strong reason? Pakistan is always under the influence of army uh, that dictatorship there are different power players unlike in india it is a democratic setup where the government has got highest say whereas in pakistan no civil government or a democratic government could complete five years this is the biggest problem and probably the real reason that it is not a stable country you see, every time a government tries to settle down in Pakistan, there are different power centers, whether it is ISI, whether it is Pakistan Army, or some Tanzims, radical elements, they come and disturb it. And they are, the society's fabric is such, it easily gets disturbed. Recently, one of the popular leader, Imran Khan, got into the center, tried to influence the country's overall state that we want to improve. Because see, all said and done, we need to have a stable, peaceful neighbor. We cannot change our neighbors, geographic neighbors. So that is how it is very essential to have stable led uh, neighbors, peaceful boundaries. And when it is possible, when the internal situations of these countries are stable, well organized, because Pakistan is in turmoil. Today, it is in a very, very bad state of economy. Of course, in the world, there are many countries which are in bad shape. Almost many countries are going to get into uh, debt crisis. Sri Lanka is one example we recently saw. So if Pakistan gets into problem, there will be some kind of effect, especially in JNK, in Punjab, and in general for our country. If there are problems to be sorted out, we have different uh, forums, whether it is diplomatic. Military is never a solution. Military is just to have a checks and balances. So on this topic, anywhere and everywhere you must highlight, the problem is different power centers in Pakistan, which never allowed to settle down Pakistan as a country. And the simple proof is, no democratic government could complete five years. Every time there has been coup. Okay. Good, Pratik. Your confidence is good. Flow is coming up. Uh, you have divided your topic in a systematic way. More statistic. Anything current, if you can bring out, you could highlight what is the ongoing situation today. Imran Khan was attacked. This can be one example. How destabilized is a country? Almost every prime minister is getting killed. Benzir Bhutto was killed. Zulfikar Ali Bhutto was killed. Or it was a systematic uh, killing through army's way of hanging. So this is how you can highlight which statistics. Whatever you want to say, you can convince the audience. Okay, good. Who is the next speaker? We can move fast. So both is ready. Sir, I will be next actually. I am having my dinner. Okay. 
Who is ready? So I am ready. Okay, Muskan. After long time, good. Okay, Pratik. Sel- yes, Muskan. I will be uh, speaking on the same topic, Indo-Pak relations. No issue. I always welcome because I will still prove there are many variations in content. Okay, that I am sure. Okay, Pratik, keep time. Okay, sir. you can start. So good evening everyone I'll be speaking on the topic that is Indo-Pak relations so on 18th of July 1947 Indian Independence Act was passed by the British Parliament then on 15th of uh, July 1947 India and Pakistan were granted as a independent nation from the British rule India was a grant um, from the British rule Uh, then India was formed out of the majority of Hindu religion and the British uh, British uh, from the British India and uh, Pakistan was formed out of the mis- uh, majority of Muslim area. At the current uh, point of time, one is the uh, fifth largest, uh, biggest GDP in the world, and the other is struggling uh, to get out of the FATF's grey list. Of course, that is Pakistan, and though uh, both got independence at the same time. So uh, we share a border of three thousand three hundred and twenty three kilometers, and share similar languages, culture, attire, food habits, agriculture practices, and a deep rooted age uh, old civilization. And now talking about the economic relations, we uh, we used to trade uh, approximately one point eight billion dollars in two thousand sixteen and seventeen. But in August two thousand nineteen, after the abrogation of Article three seventy, the uh, Pakistan completely banned the trade with India. But as of now, we can see uh, they have again uh, reconsidered the full scale trade agreement with a uh, full scale uh, trade with India because of the deteriorating conditions, uh, economic conditions of Pakistan. So the major exports uh, in from India are cotton, nuclear uh, reactor, machineries, and organic chemicals, etc. And the major imports are mineral oils, uh, uh, mineral oils, a uh, fruit and fruits, nuts. Salt, sulfur, etc., and uh, the major crisis, uh, the major crisis between the both the countries and the enemy, because the reasons of the enmities are uh, like uh, the Kashmir issue. We can see East Pakistan, that is Bangladesh, and Siachen issue, uh, Sir Creek issue, what and water disputes such as uh, Indus Water Treaty, Indus Water issue, Indus Water Treaty is the main issue, like. is the main we could highlight in uh, water treaties uh, the treaty was signed in 1960 as per the okay as per the treaty it was said that uh, the pakistan got full fledged uh, access to Ind- uh, indus Re- indus and chenab indus chenab and jhelum and uh, india got the access to India got access to Chenab and Jhelum uh, for the certain agricultural use which uh, Pakistan was uh, objecting it, and we could see that the. You can complete. Okay, so uh, we have taken many measures. Uh, for we have taken many many measures to uh, maintain their good relation with Pakistan, such as Simla Agreement, uh, Agra Treaty, Lahore Declaration, some Jota Express. But in return, what did we get? We got we just got the uh, attacks in in the return that are two thousand one that is India Pakistan attack, two thousand eight that is Mumbai attack, in two thousand sixteen Uri attack. And the recent one, two thousand nineteen, that is Pulwama attack. So we have uh, seen these kind of uh, written we are getting from uh, from Pakistan. So the so Pakistan has also uh, stated its policy that is uh, openly stated its policy that is bleed India through hundred cuts. So uh, India is lacking somewhere in such policies uh, and. Uh, in order to ensure peace we uh, and make such cooperation with the um, pakistan we i don't think uh, this should be done anymore like the 
it's just totally waste of time that um, by it's just a waste of time to make the relations by the um, by maintaining such relations by the peace talk it won't work anymore and yeah that's it thank you okay muskari suggesting peace talk won't work okay you need to give advice opinions or whatever you feel uh, but at competitive exam where ssb <clears throat> you need to be understanding the implications of each statement so probably for indo pakistan you can say that no amount of initiatives peaceful initiatives taken by india what muskan was highlighting whether it is lahore bus or shimla agreement or even the prime minister trying to land suddenly into the uh, pakistan prime minister's house and meeting him at personal level there after some peace talks or agra summit wherever there was an initiative to take peaceful route always there was a counter in terms of aggression but aggression by whom aggression by the side players in pakistan kargil was planned by whom pakistan army when nawaz sharif was trying to get closer with the indian counterpart initiating some talks on peace table so this both the countries need to understand that there are some disturbing players but then we should be highlighting when it comes to such topic relations why the relations are not cordial the disturbing factors whether it is some influential players on the other side there are some animosity reasons especially one is jnk but that is still a different issue right from beginning but the major reason is 1971 humiliation the liberation of bangladesh that pinches more for pakistan and that is how it is some kind of revenge they tried through punjab that is khalistan movement and all those things they always try and uh, give it more air more fueling and then j and k it is all supported from across the border so muskan uh, while uh, addressing the lecture aid part you need to be firstly time factor you need to manage uh, within those 3 minutes secondly the flow has to be consistent in the end it was little um, dying down kind of tone so it should not happen introduction some kind of your main material and in the end some opinion and conclusion whatever way you want to go it was good you covered different angles on this topic uh, relations in terms of trade also yes you can highlight if time permits but then briefly you must decide okay these are my impactful points in, on any topic because there you will get four topics and uh, immediately you should recall okay these are four five points i must highlight it. and this is how you one needs to practice actually because what will happen uh, if you don't tune your mind for speaking on that day in the ssb you will always then fall short of your comp- confidence for everyone you must understand you are actually practicing for that day when you get that card you get four options and out of that you know that this topic i have these many points i can cover it well this confidence you need to generate through these practices and it will happen okay overall uh, communication is okay confidence is there but then little bit reorganizing and practicing for muskan okay good who is next quick sir nikhil okay nikhil uh, muskan keep time yeah you can start good evening friends today is my topic is on agriculture agriculture is one of the major sector of the indian economy it is present in the country for thousands of years over the years it has developed and the use of new technologies and equipment replaced almost all the traditional method of farming besides in india there are still some small farmers that use the old old traditional methods of agriculture because they lack the resources to use modern method 
Furthermore, this is the only sector that contributed to growth of not only itself but also of the other sector of the country. India largely depends on the agriculture sector. Besides, agriculture is not just a mean of livelihood but a way of living life in India. Moreover, the government is continuously making efforts to develop this sector as the whole nation depends on it for food. For thousands of years, we are practicing agriculture, but still it remains underdeveloped for a long time. Moreover, after independence, we used to import food grains from other countries to fulfill our demand. But after the Green Revolution, we become self-sufficient and started exporting our surplus to the other country. Besides this, earlier, we used to depend completely on monsoon for the cultivation of food grains, but now we have constructed dams, canals, pew wells, and pump sets. Also, we now have a better variety of fertilizers, pesticides, and seeds, which help us to grow more food in comparison to what we produce during old time. With the advancement of technology, advancement, advanced equipment, better irrigation facility, and the specialized knowledge of agriculture started improving. Furthermore, our agriculture sector has grown stronger than many countries and we are the largest exporter of many food grains. It is not wrong to say that the food we eat is the gift of agriculture activities and Indian farmers who work their sweet to provide us this food. In addition, the agriculture sector is one of the major contributors to gross domestic product and national income for, of the country. Also, it required a large labor force and employing around 80% of the total employed people. The agriculture sector not only employs directly but also indirectly. Moreover, agriculture forms around 70% of our total exports. The main export items are tea, cotton, textile, spices, rice and many other items. Although agriculture is very ben beneficial for the economy and the people, there are some negative impact too. These impacts are harmful to both environment as the people involved in this sector. Moreover, most of the chemical fertilizer and pesticide contaminate the land as well as water bodies nearby. Ultimately, it leads to topsoil depletion and contamination of groundwater. In conclusion, agriculture has given so much to society, but it has its own pros and constructs that we cannot overlook. Furthermore, the government is doing the, his every bit to help in the growth and development of agriculture. Still, it needs to do something for the negative impact of agriculture to save the environment and the people involved in it. Thank you. Okay, good Nikhil. A lot of improvement I can see. Uh, it means that you are practicing. Uh, all of you must understand one very critical aspect. What is that? During SSB, at some point of time, can you prove that you are a thinking type? Because here is a question of leadership. Here is a question of officer level selection. So if you can prove that you are a thinking type or you can analyze things better or you can put across by linking various aspects very, very naturally. Now, for example, what I mean to say in this topic, agriculture, you can easily correlate, okay, how agriculture I can support as a very, very prime sector. What happened in COVID? You will easily understand and appreciate a fact that entire world was struggling and wherever the agriculture sector was okay, strong, self-reliant, those countries face little problem. Lockdown was possible because our agriculture could look after, like our villages are said to be self-reliant. Even if you isolate a village, it will survive. But if you isolate, suppose a metro, no inside-outside movement, that metro will come to standstill and a lot will lot of problems will happen and this model you apply at the europe level us or any developed country so in our case even if we were having lockdowns there was localized self-reliance system existing 
we could pull on with strict lockdowns some of the developed countries could not why because there was agriculture and supporting system existing we had green revolution we had white revolution these things are helping today we have milk we have vegetables and in pockets we can survive if you isolate 50 kilometers 100 kilometers these areas confined lockdown no buses no trains systems can still work people can survive but take any developed country from from europe suppose you isolate uk can it survive no it needs lot of things from outside you isolate within our country suppose any metro mumbai bangalore delhi if you isolate that and you don't allow neighboring villages to come in there will be a problem so we have a very very good ecosystem where agriculture is actually our backbone and it is helping us but unfortunately what nikhil was highlighting the agriculture is so important and uh, has been proving that it is helping the nation but are we really repaying it it is the only production where the producer doesn't decide price the price is decided by something else any other product in any factory the producer has a say on mrp but here there are such a dynamic situations where a farmer is not able to really dictate the price this is the dichotomy this is the problem and we have a technology we have now lot of advanced measures can we really pull up our agriculture and make it agri business can we have advanced way of farming we are having but it is not really in a professional way can we take some israel's uh, model it is coming it is really coming but it is requiring lot of improvements and mark my words when agriculture becomes strong in our country 5 trillion dollar economy nahi 10 trillion ho jayegi because it has got so much of potential yes our population is more we need more production from agriculture but we can export more whether it is fruits and vegetables and whatever uh, pulses n number of productions and people are doing it there are some developed agriculture zones in our country especially haryana punjab western maharashtra these are developed even western up these are developed pockets of agriculture there are farmers who are earning more we need some rules and regulations from the government side some support some policy changes we need to understand the requirement of agriculture and the potential which it can provide yes on one hand we are talking about metro trains or bullet trains and we are talking about good infrastructure we are talking about uh, missiles and space satellites and we are talking about solar energy everything but agriculture has got very very prime importance as far as the economy's more growth is concerned because 140 crore people in a nation and more than half if they are really gainfully employed in agriculture and allied things when we say agriculture it doesn't restrict to only uh, crops production so many allied things are there there are so many side businesses are there related to agriculture and around the agriculture so it entire that umbrella has to be understood why we are dwelling on it your understanding if it improves you can link up and when i was talking about link up on this topic you can highlight covid how we could really survive our farmers helped us in our country agriculture has to be given more importance because we cannot generate so much of employment you cannot have employment for all the people so here is a place where you can have easy employment but that requires lot of empowerment when we talk about women empowerment when we talk about rural empowerment so rural empowerment is what it is this rural economy and what we need to achieve 
people should not run towards cities and crowd it and pollute it we should have village systems which are self reliant attractive every facility reaching out to village nobody will run towards cities our villages will be stronger and economy will be stronger good okay who is next sir can i okay samreen uh nikhil keep time okay sir now you can start okay a uh, good evening everyone so uh, my topic is poverty in india poverty uh, is a condition in which a person or a community lacks in financial resources or essentials for a minimum standard of living that means the income level is so low that the basic human need can't be met as we know that niti ayog is given for uh, a responsibility for estimating poverty now uh, there are two types of poverty first is the absolute poverty and uh, second is that the relative poverty talking about absolute absolute poverty it can be defined as a inability to uh, procure the items such as food clothes housing uh, etc if the individual cannot afford the items that can be considered they, they can be considered as poor and below poverty line the relative poverty is a comparison between uh, living of different uh, living comparison between the living uh, standard of different sections of the people like for example if one person earn 1000 uh, rupees per day and the other person uh, other person earns 2000 rupees then the first person is relatively poorer than the second one now um, according to the world bank the poverty line is defined by 1.9 uh, uh, dollar per day um, we know uh, that there are different uh, causes of poverty the first is uh, colonial exploitation population exploitation uh, slow gl- growth in economy unemployment and underemployment economic inequality high inflation Uh, is the reason uh, then uh, inaccessibility to infrastructure services like energy power uh, road uh, then uh, the other reasons are like low agricultural productivity um, urban rural divide then uh, poor education system now uh, the in uh, indian uh, the power indian uh, poverty ratio is Uh, in in the year two thousand twenty twenty one is one uh, point uh, oh, sorry seventeen point nine percent and uh, when we see the figures that it it is as we know that India is among the top six economies of the world so um, top one percent one percent of the Indian's population has twenty percent of India's economy and at the same time fifty percent of country's population has thirteen. a uh, percent of uh, country's economy so when we uh, talk about the solutions on this as we know that during the covid we have learned that there are possibilities to generate jobs um, at the rural uh, level uh, by using local talents and we need uh, local schemes for this uh, we can uh, revive the cottage industries and uh, many similarly we can uh, utilize uh, field of uh, medicines by uh, j- giving a lot of uh, ayurvedic medicines can be manufactured at the local uh, level and uh, providing a, a good education um, sis, uh, providing good education uh, to the poor people can uh, cope up to deal with uh, the poverty in india thank you okay very uh, well covered samreen it is actually important topic you covered it uh, systematically poverty absolute or relative we need to understand what samreen was explaining i generally sarcastically say we are a poor nation with many rich people this is a deep meaning statement i keep saying our country is very very funny for example our country if entire gold from household from temples and wherever 
if the gold is brought in front and if it is valued i think it will be laughable to say our country as poor secondly if everyone declares real asset then also probably it will be difficult to digest that india is poor country india is not a poor country india is actually having a mess actually it is corruption related things which happens with any developing country actually so this mismanagement like when we talk about water problem is it scarcity of water no it is the mismanagement of water similarly are we really poor may not be we are uh, actually in a real sense we are not a poor country but it is some reorganizing will be required some rules and regulations uh, need to be settled corruption has to be handled well otherwise what statistics samreen was giving handful of people are holding so much of assets legally and so many people are avoiding paying tax a government has to run on tax payers money in a broad sense i am talking and if more and more people pay their taxes honestly half the problems are sorted out if i look around in any colony if there are 50 shops in today's scenario there are so many shops and if you go and survey it how many of these shopkeepers are actually paying taxes this one data itself will reveal that there is a parallel economy in india who are paying taxes today it is the salaried people or the businesses which actually cannot hide their incomes and they are also paying and hiding something this is problem with us another problem is self centered growth which is creating this poverty why can't we look up to the nation and see and work for nation's prosperity society's well being then probably we are not a poor nation there are many reasons there are many ways to actually tackle it but time has come maybe slowly we will become a, a systematically organized country but whatever chaos is there there is some cushion in it there is some elasticity in it we will not collapse 2008 recession in recent times we did not collapse just look around today in world lot of countries are facing problems there are so many problems in germany france uk these are developed countries so so far developed countries but we are not having that much problem of course there is a russia ukraine war effect also but our country is still holding on and will hold on so there is a parallel economy during demonetization also it was actually visible but this poverty is a very very complex phenomena in our country more and more you think and understand this aspect you get convinced that it is just mismanagement otherwise we need not be a poor country we are we are deserving a status much higher if you see combined wealth there are so many millionaires and billionaires in uh, country today we have now world level richest people can we do something for the collective goodness and probably things will improve a new normal has to come in which has come in western countries where it is just not your one family like bill gates and the others who are thinking of philanthropy today only tata group does it and that is how their status and respect and honor is different compared to others and rest all people they are not thinking of course it is a it is wrong to say there are some ngos and some foundations where the money is coming from big businesses that is also csr activity and all those things are happening but if we really want to remove poverty we need to empower people give the jobs or some kind of uh, business related skills entrepreneurship some startup kind of thing some confidence skill where a person stands up on his or her own way and does something worthwhile so good summary covered it well just little bit time management you can 
work upon okay who is yes, the next sir sir i will speak okay so samrin keep time today i am elaborating it because you need to understand when you speak there try and prove at least one that brownie point that you are linking up with some current thing or you are applying some head and proving that yes i have linked this topic with something try and develop that habit that's why i am harping upon okay you can start uh, good evening to all uh, my lecture topic is uh, indo uh, nepal relations so nepal is our neighboring country and it is very important from strategic, uh, strategic point of view uh, yes india and nepal is one country if we talk before the before india got independence before uh, 1947 so talking from the starting from the historical point of view we connected with nepal culturally uh, con- uh, culturally because uh, the uh, the, uh, the one of the most uh, greatest god that is uh, lord buddha born in nepal that is in today's nepal that is in lumbini which is considered as the india which is considered as the part of india in ancient times uh, after we got independence in 1947 uh, we developed very fr- friendly relations with nepal but uh, there are some issues that we need to tackle in 1950 we uh, uh, we came into agreement with nepal that is the india nepal friendship agreement and uh, in that agreement we uh, we had said a lot of things uh, we we have developed uh, nepal's uh, economy their infrastructure as well as many things uh, if we can talk if we get, if i give current examples regarding india nepal relations so it is very developing at a faster rate but at the similar point of view we have to also look that nepal should not uh, get into uh, on the uh, on the bad line of that because uh, recently if i give the example of 2018 so we develop a border dispute between nepal and india that is the area of kalapani and lipulek so in that area uh, we showed in our map the area of kalapani and lipulek and uh, nepal authorities objected it that it is not a part of indian nation it is a part of uh, it, it is a part of nepal so it create a lot of dissentment between the uh, nepal and uh, nepalese and the indian authorities and in that role and in that uh, situation china has played a very important role because china wants that nepal should uh, should be separated from india or there should be some, uh, resentment between the nepalese people so that they can easily uh, cut the friendship between india and nepal not only that if i talk about the chinese influence in the nepal it is happening at a very faster rate because china is simply penetrating into the political view of nepal and it is a very great threat to india not only that currently china has also signed a memorandum of memorandum of understanding with the nepalese authorities to develop the railway tracks that it can take to the chinese province in tibet not only that china has also said that Uh, we will develop a road to as well as the tra- railway tracks to nepal so that the people of china will get access to the birthplace of buddha and last uh, 30 seconds uh, if i talk from the trade perspective from the uh, from the education perspective so definitely there is friendly relation because lot of candidates lot of aspirants who uh, who are aiming to join the uh, indian armed forces as well as the ne- nepali forces they trained into the nda ota ima uh, ina and afa Uh, so lastly i want to conclude that and according to my opinion uh, nepal is very important neighbor to us but we have to see that uh, develop from the development point of view we should develop nepal india has currently uh, signed, time over india has currently signed a lot of education related uh, agreements with nepal they are developing the nepal is nepal universities with the help of it not only that uh, currently the president of uh, nepal Uh, grant the honorary ca- honorary rank of general to the general of indian army that is manoj pande so lastly uh, i would like to say that we need to develop more friendly relation bet- uh, because in future if we want to tackle china so nepal is the core point for all of us for the indian uh, from from the indian perspective thank you okay so both so both try to link it up with something current uh, getting that honorary rank or uh, some kind of uh news and that is how one need to be applying that whatever i was highlighting nepal is a very important country for us important neighbor for us himalayan country probably from the religious angle also hindu country so there are issues of late which are happening and we need to be re- little bothered about it how china is actually getting little closer i think if i am not wrong today was the news where it was highlighted some land is encroached by china some acres i am just uh, forgetting how many acres so that dispute is going on as such some 
debt trap china is aiming but nepal is becoming wise and not really falling the way sri lanka has gone into that fold sri lanka realized little later but they were helpless but nepal being a small country and a buffer zone for us because between us and um, china this small country we should be careful because traditionally nepal has always been closer to us so many nepali soldiers and officers or the other citizens who are really working in india or uh, indian rupees they are used to handle so all these things are very very um, important to understand that traditionally we were one we may be existing as a two country but nepal is just like india we always had friendly relationships there are some misunderstandings and some issues which probably is created so india is taking care and there are boundary related things which can be sorted out but we cannot afford to lose a good relationship with nepal because that is not in our interest or even in nepal's interest nepal being a country where many citizens of nepal today being ex armed forces from india are drawing pension from uh, india there is a special recruitment there are uh, gorkha paltans gorkha rifles where so many nepalis are there so we cannot just ignore the fact that we are almost like one country so maybe uh, there were some misunderstandings and some issues which are getting sorted out but things are taking time to get into normal okay uh, who is there okay uh, subodh uh, good confidence it has come up well hmm? and uh, you try to link up with some current things good yes. uh, now lakhan and vijay who wants to speak can i sir yes sir yes, also there i will speak i sir okay we will go to lakhan now subodh keep time sir i am also remaining yes sir yes, you may yes, come please you can start good to to and energy jivan and we can pressure ukraine yeah how the european countries are are struggling to carry the energy since the russia was cutting the nord stream and nord stream one pipeline so that the Russian, the european union was not before that in delhi and russia almost percent and the winter season is coming very close since the russia was cut the electricity as well as other energy energy uh, supplying to european union since the russia ukraine war was started how the people of europe Europe are struggling with the with this crisis. Now we we have seen that with this crisis, recently we have an example of Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka has was uh, bankrupt. Apart from that, the many countries like Bangladesh is also knocking the door of the IMF to get um, uh, to get the loan. Apart from this, all the European countries are struggling to get the energy since because of the winter season are coming very close. and uh, with the recent example the o- opec countries are cutting down the cutting down the production of the of the oil because of if the uh, if the production is less then the inflation will be high and not only uh, not only in india but all over the world even the global leaders are also facing the inflation in their country right now that's why we have seen the many protest and uh, with the latest example of the uk in which two prime minister have been already re- already resigned from their post and it is also coming to the new that in the recent times the prime minister rishi sunak is also going to be shut down of his chair we are not uh, concerned that but it is also looking in the news right now, news now in this thing we have seen how we can see this Uh, energy crisis with the blumberg report as india having 0% uh, 
chances of precision but as we know that that uh, russia usa was having a good relationship with saudi arabia saudi arabia was one of the largest producing of oil but since the russia since the saudi arabia is you know, merging towards russia and it's it's is cuts down cuts down its production of the oil so that the all the countries even the us is also facing its uh, inflation in the in the oil product oil now i would like to conclude by saying that that energy is one of the main part of our life and india is also also converting itself towards the uh, renewable energy because nowadays the india dependent on highly dependent on the thermal project thermal electricity but since the we have taken the taken the uh, scope to cop 27 to stop the climate change india is emerging towards the renewable energy had that is relevant uh, that is hydropower electricity wind electricity and solar electricity so that the we will be self dependent and in this energy war we will not be dependent on others thank you okay lakhan uh, initially voice was breaking later on it was okay what was the exact uh, topic uh, heading Uh, say again lakhan uh, energy crisis energy crisis yes sir okay uh, you have covered it well initial 20 30 seconds i could not hear it properly energy crisis is a very important subject to understand and you have got a practical demonstration what is happening after russia ukraine war classic example energy crisis is a deeper subject and all countries require energy energy means what for industry you need electricity or some kind of energy for vehicles you require transport a transport of all sorts whether it is sea road or air you cannot survive for energy means all types of energy electricity or gas or fuel or whatever so this energy crisis which is now resultant outcome of this war which is actually targeted the players who are actually planning this war are creating the energy crisis and then there is a another fallout food crisis inflation food crisis or energy crisis these two things are visible today after this critical war which is going on and these energy crisis will weaken the countries any country who doesn't have enough energy cannot think of war because today just take a example if we fall short of electricity our internal entire structure will collapse if industry is not having enough power if farmers are not getting enough power if the household are not getting enough power country will not fight outside because there will be internal fighting if there is a food crisis you need not to go and fight other countries inside only there will be a war some kind of uprising and exactly we can see these two factors playing in many countries food crisis and energy crisis and you try and read more and more and you can speak much better all of you because these are now live in the world we used to study in theory energy crisis food crisis but how these wars are getting manipulated and such situations are created now covid time we had heard so many conspiracies but we keep it aside and we assume that it was a natural uh, calamity for all of us then many sorts of crisis happened and especially the food crisis but here it is a created war war can be stopped but it is not stopping and this food and energy crisis are happening and the result is going to be very bad 
you never know we just saw what uh, lakhan was highlighting two prime ministers resigned so far in uk many other countries may see some political instability in times to come another 3 4 months few more countries will have some kind of problems okay so good lakhan uh, points were good only thing initially audio or network was a issue for us uh, otherwise your confidence is okay some pronunciations you can practice more it will come out further good okay good now sanjeevni and uh, vijay sanjeevni go ahead lakhan uh, can you keep time yes sir okay sanjeevni yes sir okay sanjeevni start uh good evening to everyone today my lecture topic is bullet train in india high speed railway in india is going to be a new step toward a, a technological advanced nation which would help to develop a uh, uh, develop of in- infrastructure as well as a reduce of in- uh, unemployment and they enter into the uh, high speed railway group would, uh, would work as a status uh, symbol for the country attracting not only advance for all over the world but also making her an attractive uh, pdf option bullet train will uh, bullet train will uh, reduce travel time in uh, travel time uh, increasing the connectivity as well as uh, in case of main, uh, means transport hence um, elementary religion religion of uh, difference the question of economical facility is being uh, rising in the project of uh, project uh, is too costly at the uh, at 1.5 lakh crores uh, japan invested about 80% of the money in the indian bullet uh, indian uh, bullet train project as the uh, nominal nominal uh, interest uh, nominal interest rate or rate of uh, 0.5% benefit of both countries and uh, sev- several uh, St- several strength then the uh, bound uh, bond between uh, between the uh, between the two countries uh, japan will only uh, be providing the technology to uh, to india after the span of uh, 15 years still the uh, then uh, they are going to provide uh, the train uh, train to india making as a dependent dependent the cost of the project is more than 1.5 lakh crores for the single rail line instead uh, this money can be invested in the development of the present railway system 90% of the railway uh, passenger of indian uh, india travel through a sleeper uh, class or lower class so uh, this uh, this uh, some of the money should be invested in the development of the present railway system which for which for the uh, large population Uh, spin uh, in uh, high speed uh, railway has turned out be a, a profitable for their economy south korea uh, south korea hr uh, hs are uh, carry almost 70% of the population so lastly i want to conclude that india has one of the largest rail network in the world um, world carrying almost 20 million passenger every day and more than 89 major accident has been taken place uh, to ha- 2000 which employ uh, employs indian railway tracks need to be a modernization therefore uh, this uh, hey, this of some of the yeah. money should be invest in the project as a uh, priority uh, pri- priority than the investment of the high speed railway the india the indian ministry of railway uh, prepared the indian railway in 2020 uh, in uh, in 2021 uh, in 2021 thank you okay Hello? good sanjeevni uh, flow is coming up lot of improvement is there less grammatical mistakes good uh, you are coming up well bullet trains sir, i want to uh, say something uh, sir yes. you complete your sentence then i will take no you can go ahead no sir you complete your sentence okay so it is uh, coming up i can see improvement bullet trains is uh, a very very debatable thing whether our country really requires fast speed trains or not can we utilize this money for the upliftment of society education sector farmers welfare and what not but then if you see rationally you have to have a standing in the world you want to prove that you are a powerful nation so how people will acknowledge you are a powerful nation you should have space related power you should have 
military power you should have energy related uh, robustness that there is no crisis and there there are some symbolic things bullet train is one of them if you come and have uh, such kind of uh, look from the foreign angle the industry will come people will have more respect that there is fast tracked businesses here and that is how we are developing our surface transport today roads are improving at uh, unprecedented speed we are having so many uh, development projects as far as the road goes uh, we are going for waterways and same in the same category we are heading for good train network as such our population requires that we need multiple levels of transport air rail road everything is required and uh, water way is cheapest but rail is next rail is also cheapest provided we have um, better management of it and it is a need actually whether we acknowledge whether we like it or not we, it is a need of fast transportation and that is why it is coming up cost is high but then it is a necessity okay sanjeevni so actually um, currently i am doing internship uh, so i am i'm not getting much time about my studies sir so this time i'm too much demotivated sir i don't know what happened okay even i prepared another topic sir uh, in um, modelization but i can't speak sir this topic. it's okay I see i will just give you one hint when you are working part time working or busy in classes or some kind of engagement is too heavy you have to have that art of stealing time samay ko churana hai kaise if you are traveling if there is a gap between two activities morning time while getting ready you need to draw out some kind of art smartness see working hard and working smartly there is always a debate smart work and hard work you must acquire a habit of smartness in every aspect and time management better you understand it now that your whole life's success will largely depend upon how you are able to manage time whether you become tomorrow's general you become tomorrow's ambani you become tomorrow's common man your time management is the critical aspect which will dictate your progress in life so stealing time just think over it otherwise i'll clarify what is this stealing or managing time okay sanjeevni yes sir and it is possible don't worry even prime minister of any nation takes out time for almost many things we are nothing we can do a lot of wonders we have got enough opportunities if i ask you today schedule usme mai kam se kam 10 jagah gina dunga wahan pe tum time nikal sakti okay sanjeevni okay so actually um, i am giving as much as possible my time but sir i don't know where i am going to wrong i don't know sir hmm why smart work aana hai in, uh, Uh, in night uh, i am coming for our office but i don't know sir i feel like that ki maine kuch kiya hi nahi aaj nahi nahi aisa nahi hai you must see positively ki how much you are learn today job kar rahe ho part time whatever that is also a fruitful engagement lekin wahan pe interaction karte samay find out at least one person with whom you can have quality time of discussion lunch time or breakfast time wherever you find a companion utilize that time more importantly travel nowadays is a key area where if you can do something mumbai locals can teach you a lot just study how these people one hour travel how they utilize productively second is screen time screen time just analyze how much screen time you have whether it is tv mobile or whatever laptop that screen time if it is fruitful okay if it is not fruitful cut down on it okay uh, we will go to vijay now last speaker Sanjeevi keep time Yes sir just a minute Vijay Okay Uh you can start Good evening friend today's my lecture topic is the future of indian agri- agriculture there is a need for a work on a cost 
effective technologies with the environmental protection and on conserving our natural resources agriculture in india is live livelihood for a majority of the population and can never be under under mistake although its contribution in the gross domestic product gdp has has uh, reduced to less than 20% and contribution of other sectors increased increase at a faster rate agriculture production has grown this has made us sell sufficient and take us from being a beginning bowl for a food after independence to a net exporter of uh, agriculture and allied produce total food grain production in the country is estimated to be a record 291.95 million tons according to the second annual estimated for a uh, 219 to 20 this is a new to be a happy about but as per the estimated of indian council for agriculture research demands for a food grain would increase to 345 million tons by 230 increasing population increasing average income and globalization effective in india will increase demand for demand for quality quality quantity and nutrients food and uh, and a variety of variety of food therefore uh, pressures of decreasing available cultivate cultivable land to produce more quantity uh, quant- quantity variety and quality of food will keep on increasing india is blessed with a large arable land with fi- uh, 15 agro climatic zones and defined by iscar having almost all the type of weather conditions soil type and capable of growing a variety of crops india is the top producer of milk spices pulses tea cashew and etc the second largest producer of rice wheat oil seed fruit and vegetable sugarcane and cotton in spite of these facts the the, the average productive productivity of many crops in the india is quite law the country with population in the next decades in expected to become the largest in the world and providing food from them will will be a very prime issue farmer are still not able to earn respectable earnings even after over seven decades of planning since the independence majority of the farmers are still facing problems of poor production and or poor returns majority contribution in indian agriculture region thank you thank you time up okay vijay lot of statistics data you try to give uh, good it is always uh, welcome if you give data or some kind of statistics but uh, you can balance it out it was on a higher side more of a statistics in 3 minutes cut down on that some opinions some kind of uh, to the uh, practical aspects if you can explain what is the future like your topic was future in, of agriculture in india we are having more population less land holding we are getting technology in times to come if technology comes to the today it is required because lot of people are not willing to work in far and that is why we need technology but then it should not happen that we don't need humans which is going to happen in many sectors where the machines are replacing humans in agriculture of course we need for hard work the machines but tomorrow like whatever in australia big countries where land holding per person is very very high so that countries require so many machineries to assist them today we have a labor force but we need in times to come more technology then we may have drones and uavs probably Uh, in the agriculture area we will have advanced techniques of farming but we need some kind of support from the satellites in terms of studying the weather or soil testing soil pattern study which kind of crop is actually helpful uh, or possible in these areas all those things going to happen then biggest drawback as on date is warehousing we actually produce so much but if i am not wrong substantial amount almost 20 30% of the production 
which are farmers take pain to produce gets damaged gets spoiled because of non availability of quality warehouses or preservation systems you see on streets if you see uh, so many tomatoes thrown or some kind of vegetables thrown or any surplus thing which now there is no proper technique to store it and we lose on it ultimately it gets uh, into that losses this warehousing will be a big area where we need to work cold storage or whatever you want to call it but this is area where i think half the problems will get solved if you can preserve then some of the things are easily preservable but a uh, lot of uh, fresh vegetables and fruits and all those things which gets actually damaged that warehousing will be a big area where people need to work or the government need to work okay good uh, i can see which a good confidence compared to what you spoke uh, when you started uh, with us today lot of confidence i can see are you regularly practicing talking with your friend or uh, on your own vijay <laughs> trying to practice no? your communication yes vijay hello ha huh, vijay i am able to hear i can see lot of improvement that means you are on right track yes sir good keep practicing because the confidence has to grow on different topics huh? yes. and if possible yes. no reference yes. no cheats if possible those who can switch on their cameras practice on on cameras or be honest to yourself no reference just go random talking it will give more confidence to you because in ssb there will not be anything with you you and the audience your own group and the gto sitting there and you will be speaking without any reference points in your hand so practice from that angle okay nice uh, to reconnect yes. we will have more of sessions uh, we will have special sessions for serving types or job doing people because i think time management will be a issue for them and of course some of the uh, candidates are having ssb soon so we will have for them uh, some sessions which will cover entire that uh, understanding of ssb okay abhaya so just... i think we 27 uh, december okay you got 27 december enough time is there we will have at least gp <laughs> some kind of psychological test some pptt practices we will do tomorrow if possible we will do one pptt online uh, lakhan and other serving personals can see What is the suitable time, Lakhanji? Sir, this is the only we can see that is the suitable time for us because we are also doing work uh, in our office up to eight, hmm. and uh, thereafter we are only going to be free. Yes, you are an ekai, yes, isn't it? No, sir, I am a clerk. Okay, you are a clerk. Okay, there are other ekaiis we have. Yes, okay. uh, yes, what are are you are saying? No, sir. Okay, someone said something. Okay. Abhaya? Yes, sir. Good night. Sorry, sir. Actually, no, sir. Actually, I just forgot about the time, sir. Sorry, sir. Okay, no issue. But are you studying regularly? Uh, sir, not regularly because I'm joining somewhere. Okay. So that's why not regularly, sir. but uh, i am practicing for poqs or uh, olqs okay so i explained uh, how to manage time smartly i questioned it explained in the sense i gave hints that time can be managed irrespective of what kind of engagement you have whole day 24 hours is a hell lot of time in that you can manage everything you can steal the time and you can really do wonders uh, sanjeevni speak to abhaya and try and convince her that time is manageable okay sorry sir yes abhaya sir sorry no no it's okay i'm just telling find out more yes. time because see whatever time is moving out this time is precious in your age everyone because yes sir ha huh, these couple of months or couple of years are very important do your best tapasya ki tarah karo 
तपस्या मीन्स दैट सेक्रीफाइस पेन होना चाहिए बॉडी पेन आईज पेन ब्रेन पेन सारे पेन्स हो तो फिर देखो द मोर यू स्वेट इन पीस द लेस यू ब्लीड इन वॉर ये एनालॉजी वहां थोड़ा सा सोचो अभी इतनी मेहनत करो कि लगना चाहिए कि ऊपर वाले को भी दया आ जानी चाहिए आप लोगों को ठीक है ओके सर यस समरी सर कैन वी लाइक टुमारो हैव जीपी सेशन लाइक लिटिल बिट टिप्स फॉर दैट यस जीपी वी विल हैव एन ऑनलाइन एंड समरी यू कैन कम फिजिकली आल्सो इन क्लास वी विल हैव देयर आल्सो ओके डोंट वरी when when is your likely ssb so my ssb is on 1st december okay okay we will have don't worry tomorrow or maybe just next two three days before you go for ssb that is for sure okay anyone any point yes so my point is that actually sir we are working in our office and most of time we are talking with each other in hindi okay no and but, uh, this is the only time we are speaking english that's what i am uh, so sometimes we feel some hesitate to speak and uh, some pronunciation or also some we can some hesitate i understand but my suggestion that is, is only sure. uh lakhan my suggestion is find out at least one buddy in your office or in your home any, yes sir any one with whom at least half an hour at this stage because you all are heading for ssb so at this stage half an hour minimum you are talking mostly or even the other person can talk that hearing is also important that conversation has to happen if it works out well otherwise this platform uh, this is for that only come and at least deliver any topic which you prepared this goes long way in your uh, confidence building communication improvement this goes long way because 3 minutes speaking others are listening to you is a very simple yet very powerful exercise to so keep doing that practice whenever you get an opportunity at your level you find out your friends and not necessary you have to have some physical friends with you use that phone you can make video call to your who are relatives or friends and do at least one exercise 5 minutes 10 minutes in one day if you do this 5 10 minutes with whomever you feel comfortable wo kahi bhi baitha ho aapka dost ho relative ho kahi bhi just do something because wo talking bahut important hai okay and if someone is not getting any friend relative okay, thank you to mujhe call kar lo just we will decide time ki main sununga fir <laughs> okay okay we will end here have a good time yes. keep studying keep your hopes alive dream high and work more importantly work very very sincerely okay bye good night jai hind good night sir jai sir